Hi guys, this is Ashley back with a new video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. We got a lot to discuss. The EBT wants to make amends with Nicki Minaj. They want Nicki Minaj back on their side. Or are they trying to use her for views? Now, Nicki Minaj has been nominated for six awards, um, including Album of the Year for Pink Friday 2, Best Female Hip Hop Artist, Video of the Year for Barbie World with Ice Spice. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Um, EBT Her with Tasha Cobes for the single Blessings, and twice for Best Collaboration with Lil Uzi, Everybody, and Barbie World with Ice Spice. So this is going to be very interesting to see if she win any awards with Ice because, you know, they're not on the best of terms right now. Now, a lot of fans are saying that the EBT Awards are trying to use Nicki Minaj for views. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Do you feel like EBT is trying to use Nicki Minaj for views? Or do you feel like they're being genuine? I honestly feel like it would make sense for her to have the most nominations. She had the most successful female rap album of the year. Let's just be honest. I mean, no other female rap artist has put out an album that sold 228,000 first week. Not even Doja Cat. So I think that this is an olive branch that they're trying to extend to Nicki Minaj to see if she goes to the EBT Awards. And I heard that allegedly EBT wants her to perform. They would love for her to perform, especially since she has been doing so well on her tour. I don't know if she has any time. I don't think she has enough time to perform at the EBT Awards because at the end of the day... She still has overseas shows that she has to do for Gag City, Pink Friday 2 World Tour. And as you can clearly see here, Botch and Bitter has failed to successfully sell out the EBT experience, which she is headlining. Um, other big acts are like Sexy Red. I think DeVito is also performing and is still not getting sold out. Okay. Now, even though. The EBT Awards did shade Nicki Minaj, you know, back in 2019, saying that she was getting dragged by her lace front because Botch and Bitter won a scammy before Nicki. Um, I heard that they really do regret that and they want to try to make amends with Nicki Minaj and, you know, have her at least go to one award show, you know, because she hasn't been in years. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Um, do you think Nicki Minaj should attend the uh, EBT Awards? I don't think she has time to attend. Maybe next year she could possibly attend, but I don't think she has time this year because she's on a world tour. Now, moving on to Doja Cat. Doja Cat is the highest selling rapper of the 2000s and 20s. She is at number one for how many points and weeks she has been charting you know, since 2020, okay? Currently, I think she got 3 million points, okay? Because Doja Cat low-key stays on the charts. It don't matter how much she do, you know, first week when it comes to album sales, Doja Cat stays on the chart. I don't understand how Megan Thee Stallion's at number two. That doesn't make any sense because she don't be staying on the charts. Botch and Bitter is at number three. Nicki Minaj is at four. And Scratch Off and Ice Spice. <laughs> They are right behind Nicki Minaj at five and six. Um, that might be because of John Cook and um, the low energy song Scratch Off did because it definitely ain't no recent music. No shade. Um, and I don't understand how Nicki could be at number four. But we can't forget that WAP and Up were really big records for Botch and Bitter. You know, I think that was in the top 10 for weeks. OK, um, she hasn't had a hit since, but WAP was a really big record. I think it sold like eight million copies in the U.S. so far, almost diamond. And just to clarify, this is for the 2020s. OK, so so far for the 2020s, um, Doja Cat 
for whatever reason, has been named the best selling or highest selling for a female rapper amongst the Hot 100 charts. Not album sales, okay, for the Hot 100 charts, for how many weeks and points she accumulated, um, you know, from being on the Hot 100 since 2020. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, Botch and Bitter um, is starting up her sympathy train for her next single that allegedly is going to drop. And then she also has a feature that is dropping next week, according to her. She said in her Rolling Stone interview that a TikToker made her cry, okay? Um, After they had said she doesn't take rap seriously and she's better off being an influencer. She said, I take my music so effing serious that I don't even put it out. I care about the quality. I care about giving something special every single time. Okay, so that's what Botch and Bitter has said in her Rolling Stone interview, which I definitely don't believe. I think Botch and Bitter cares about the charts. She cares about the number ones, the top 10 hits. I don't think she necessarily cares about the art of rap. She cares about making money, being able to get other opportunities from doing rap. Okay, because if you cared about the art of rap, you would just be putting music out. And just watch and see if the audience receives it. But you don't do that. Now, because she said that, a fan clocked her team and says, Cardi B is always going on a sympathy tour. Music is supposed to be fun. She worried about doing numbers, just like what I said. Stats and opinions instead of just releasing is always an excuse. Get in the booth, B word, and shut up. And then Botch and Bitter responded and deleted the tweet because she really didn't want the smoke. Um, She said that was a two-day interview each day, three hours long. I'm allowed to talk about all my emotions, not just my happy ones. Just like you wrote a book about yours, worrying about the damage you do knowingly sleeping with DL men just to expose them, you strong B-word. Wow. Okay, Um, but she deleted this comment because she didn't want the smoke. But it do seem as though Botch and Bitter do be, you know, trying to get the sympathy train rolling when things don't go her way. She want people to feel bad for her, sympathize with her, see her as an underdog. And it's just not working anymore. Okay, if you're not putting out the album, if you're not putting out no music, you need to retire and go on Love and Hip Hop where you belong. Or go back to the strip club because you basically naked every single day anyway. She also doubles down on the fact that she opened doors for female rappers. She said, I know for a fact I opened an effing door. I know for a fact that I can rap. I know for a fact I make effing hits. Sometimes people be trying to belittle me. And it's like, no, I'm really that B word. And y'all effing know it. But what's the last hit record that you had? It was WAP. I mean, you haven't had a hit in years. You talking about you can make hits, but you don't have any recent ones. And then also Botch and Bitter reveals three new track titles from her upcoming album in her new interview with Rolling Stone. The three track titles are Better Than You, um, Don't Do Too Much, Pick It Up, okay? Um, they sound like very boring songs to me. Um, this is the best you can do for a song title, but you know, that doesn't matter. It just matters how the song sounds. So we'll see what partisan Fontaine was able to cook up in the studio. Okay. When the album drops, which could be in like 2027, 2028, 2025. We don't really know. Now next Megan Thee Stallion reveals her upcoming album has 16 tracks. Okay. Let me know if y'all gonna be supporting Megan Thee Stallion. How much you think she gonna do first week? Um, and you know, even though Boa didn't do so well on the charts, you know, allegedly is only going to do top 60 on a hot 100. Um, you know, allegedly, you know, that was just a warning to Nicki Minaj because she was taking shots allegedly at Nicki Minaj and botch and bitter, but allegedly that is just a warning. Okay. So, you know, Piz part two could be on the album. Okay. So let me know how y'all feel about that. You know, I don't know what it is about Megan Thee Stallion because she's so talented. 
But I don't really get into her music like that. Like, you know, Floppazine wasn't the album for me. Um, I haven't listened to any of her music since probably Savage. Okay, I don't know what has changed since Savage, but I don't get into any of her music. A lot of her music sounds the same. Um, it don't matter how much she switch up the beat. She barely switch up her flow to me. I don't know if it's just her accent, but, you know, her music is kind of boring to me. I never get into Megan Thee Stallion, to be quite honest. I actually think other people deserve the hype that Megan Thee Stallion gets. I think JT deserves the hype that Megan Thee Stallion gets, or maybe even like a Dolce. I feel like they put more um, time and energy into the creative process of their music than Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion only gets attention on social media because she got the sympathy train. But clearly they don't be really supporting Megan Thee Stallion like that. No shade. Moving on to Queen B. According to an insider, Renaissance, a film by Queen B, will be on Disney Plus in July. Nope, uh uh-uh, I'm tired of Queen B being greedy. You already put the documentary in movie theaters and it flopped and you probably didn't fully recoup you know, the money that you put into the documentary to put it in the theaters. So now you're trying to go to Disney Plus and Netflix. No, no, no. You should have done that the first time. Okay? Nobody cares about the Renaissance documentary anymore. Renaissance came out in 2022. We are in 2024, it says. Stop it. I know you money hungry, but instead of doing that, Why don't you focus on trying to get a product that you can sell and make billions of dollars from like Rihanna did? Okay. See, the hair care line is flopping. Nobody cares about that. Ivy Park flopped. Um, Their perfume flopped. You need to stop. You need to stop. Okay. I do not want to see no documentary from Queen Bee for Renaissance. You need to focus on Act 3 and go back to R&B. That's what you need to do. Now, moving on from that, fans are calling out Champagne Thickums for allegedly calling Wackademics and making him apologize to SZA, but not doing it for Nicki Minaj. Let's take a listen. By the way, he was working on For All the Dogs, and I had just gotten into it with uh, SZA. Mm. And he essentially called me and said, yo, I'm trying to cut these songs with this girl. And she's visibly upset. Some of the stuff you've said really bothers her. What are you saying? I don't even want to repeat. You said this guy. What did you say? I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Yo. Do you, would you take if it you've back? ever seen a random mind though, like it kind of cuts a little deep when it kind of gets there. <laughs> I'll search it up after. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's try to keep that off. But yeah. uh, anyway, so he says, bro, like, it's like, He's like, I know you because I watch your content. I know you don't probably give a fuck. And for you, it's probably like, you know, it's she like you felt she did something. And you're just responding. But like, she's not like she's not one of those people who is like built for that type of stuff. Like she's an emotional, very precious girl. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're, like, if it's not that serious, could you at least let her know? Because I think she really believes that this is the energy that you really feel. And it is. Uh, she's one of those people who. In the world, it does affect her. A lot of fans were saying, well, you know, how comes he didn't do that for Nicki Minaj? You know, because academics do be dragging Nicki Minaj. He hasn't really dragged her recently because the tour has been doing phenomenal. But um, prior to that, he would always be on Nicki Minaj's back. Well, I got the answer for you. One, SZA be giving up that punani, okay? She has smart coochie management. The benefits of sleeping with Champagne Thickums and being cool with him, mind you, he's been smashing SZA since 08 on and off, is that he is going to stick up for you. He's going to give you free features. They did two collaborations um, last year for all the dogs, and he promoted them. You know, he did a song with Nicki Minaj called Needles. He didn't promote it one bit, okay, because she wasn't giving up the Punani. So SZA, who has. Very smart coochie management, unlike Ruby Rose. SZA knows how to sleep her way to the top. And she got with the hottest rapper, okay? And even before he was hot, she was sleeping with him. But now that he's hot again, you got to get back into bed and shut Wackademics up, okay? That's what she did. 
And so, with that being said, Nicki Minaj don't be doing that. So, why would Champagne Thickham stick up for her when he's sleeping with SZA and doing three or four records with her with Sexy Red? And, you know, no shade, Rich Baby Daddy is one of my favorite songs. I ain't going front. Like, I really don't like the Bage BBL guy like that, but Rich Baby Daddy is a hit. And it's really no shade, but Rich Baby Daddy was better than Needles. No shade. Now, Hip Hop DX has named... The top 10 best diss tracks of all time. Tupac comes in at number one with Hit Him Up. I agree with that. Um, Nas Ether at number two. Kung Fu Kenny, Not Like Us at number three. Champagne Thickums back to back at number four. I don't think Champagne Thickums back to back should be over the takeover. I think the takeover was better than back to back, but that's just me. And then the story of Adonan. That should definitely not be at number six. That was better than back to back, in my opinion. Then you got Ice Cube, No Vaseline, um, Calm, The B is Yo, Miss Hill, Lost Ones, and K Dot, Like That. Um, like That is actually Metro Boomin' song. Kung Fu Kenny was a feature. But I do agree with majority of, you know, the songs on this list. Um, it's set back to back is way too high. No shade. Um, not only that, Kung Fu Kenny's Not Like Us has sold over a million units in the U.S. Fastest 2024 song to reach this milestone. It reached a million units in 12 days. So congratulations to the king of rap on that. Not really shocked. This is a hit song. I know Champagne Thickums is shitting in his pants because he done woke up the beast. Now, Sweetie dropped her song, Nani, okay? Um, I think this song is okay. I think she's trying to go for a TikTok song. And the reason why I feel that way is because in the music video, she was kind of overly dancing. Like, the song had a lot of choreography. And to me, it wasn't necessary for that type of record, okay? Like, she was doing, like, a semi-eight count for a song where you're just saying, ooh, nani, nani, nani. Like, I don't think it was necessary, but I think that she wants people to really choreography to this song on TikTok. That's what it's coming off as, okay? But, you know, the song ain't too bad. I'm not going to have it in my playlist. No shade. You know, that's not my cup of tea. But, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people or some people will be streaming it. Not a lot, but maybe some people. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. I will see you guys in the next video and have a great day.